The contest is nearing its end and you are still stuck on this last problem you were attempting. The only difference between now and an hour ago is that you are very close to the final solution. But that thing, that one single test file is ruining your entire day. You don't even care about rating anymore. You just want to know what is that test case. You may be thinking, is it even possible to find out what that test case is before the contest ends? And the answer is yes, but terms and conditions apply. Here are the conditions you require to apply this trick. Number one, each test file must have only one test case, unlike code shift, which usually has a T number of test cases per file. But you don't need this trick on code shift. Telegram works just fine. Number two, each test case should comprise of only one numeric value as input. Technically, it can work on strings as well, but that's way too unrealistic. Number three, you can verify your output, whether it is correct or incorrect within the time constraints of the problem. If all these conditions meet, it is time to roll. I'll be using this recent problem from an ARC for demonstration of this trick. So this problem gives us an input n. And we want to generate a string of length less than equals to 1 e6. So string and string can have digits from 1, 2, 3, up to 9. So string could be like 7, 9, 1, 3, 5, something like that. And what we want is out of all the sub strings possible, like 7, 9, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 1, of all these sub strings possible, the number of substrings which are divisible by 7 and what I mean by that is so let's say this is 35 we convert it into an integer so 35 and this is divisible by 7 or not so we want the number of substrings that are divisible by 7 to be equals to n so what we have to do is generate some string so details a little bit irrelevant what we have is we have an input input is n okay and our output our output is some f of n right we generate some string we we do something and it generates a string now what we want to do is we want to figure out what a test case is that we are failing so let's go to my submissions and uh, nothing to look here nothing to look here so as you can see here one of the test case was failing I was getting WA and uh, luckily I can actually calculate I can actually find out what this test case is uh, but before this we also need one more thing a checker okay so we have another function GN G uh, let, let's call this a okay so a is equals to f of n we have a, a g of a which gives us some number x and if this number x is equals to n then our solution was right what this does is it counts the number of substrings that were divisible by 7 so this is our checker g is our checker f is our actual solution and n is our input and if g of f of n is equals to x if is equals to n so for for winning for having the correct solution this holds right whatever we get the input we run through our function and then we run through our checker that should give us n so we have these things and uh, we want to find out what this test case is and uh, as you can see there's only one test case per file and every test case has only one number now how do we find this so okay let me write this a little cleaner so we we have n as the input right we have n as the input this is our solution f which gives us output 
So this is our solution which gives us output fn and then we have our checker which is g and uh, this gives us some x and if x is equals to if x is equals to n that implies correct solution otherwise wrong solution and we know that we are getting wrong solution in one of the test cases but we don't know what that test case is so an n is in this range so how can we find this so let's write down n okay for now for example let's assume n is from 1 to 10 okay so 1 to 10 so let's write down n 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 now i'm gonna say i'm gonna say that the test case i'm failing at is 5 okay i'm gonna assume that the test case i'm failing at is 5 uh, i'm failing at this test case so what i will do is in my solution in my submission i will run my solution through the checker and see am i failing if i am failing okay if i am failing then i will check is so when i when i failed okay i know what n i got in the input right so if that n was greater than 5 if that n was greater than 5 that is this range then i will throw a runtime error otherwise i will throw a wa if you have done binary search you should be knowing where we are going okay so and if you're wondering how to throw a runtime error and how to throw a wa so let's go here and uh, to throw a runtime error you can just do like this you exit code you exit with a runtime error code or if you don't want to exit with a runtime error you can just return out and you won't get any output so you will get wa so here's the thing now if it was let's say it was seven then i will throw a runtime error right so i know that the number that i'm failing at is greater than five so i know that this is the range in which the number exists just like binary search right and then i will choose the middle of this let's say eight okay so i choose eight again i mean I, now i choose eight and for greater than eight greater than eight i throw runtime error and uh, for less than equals to eight i throw wa now based on whatever i get let's say i got wa this time then i know that this is the range then i know that the failing test case lies in this range okay so i will choose this now and i will say okay great for greater than seven i will throw runtime error for less than seven i will throw a wa so for if i get a runtime error i know answer is eight however if i get wa i will go one more step and will find whether i need a wa whether six is the failing test case or seven so yeah this was actually a very nice way a very practical way to implement binary search in daily life and because you do cp daily that life okay so if you want to know how i did it in my submissions here is how i did okay and uh, see as you can see this is binary search search space reduces by 2 every time so it goes like n 2n by 2 2n by 4 and so on so it takes log n steps so to calculate for 1e6 i had to do how many times again uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 log uh, 2 Mm, okay never mind i don't know how to use that 
so log 2 1 e 6 I had to do almost 20 times okay so almost 20 wrong answers or runtime errors and uh, let me first of all show you the montage uh, wait, wait, no not this my summations so in actually I wasn't able to do it during the contest because my checker was wrong. After the contest, I got the correct checker from one of my friends. And uh, here I got my first runtime error. And from here, as you can see, I kept getting runtime error first of all. So it was on the right. Then I got one WA. So I moved left, then runtime errors, then WA, then runtime errors, then WA. So as you can see, this is just the binary search process. And I kept doing it and in the end I was able to figure out what it was as you can see in the end I just wrote hmm, where is where am I yes I just wrote so eval is of my checker okay so I wrote if checker is not equals to n I checked is n exactly this value then I'm throwing a runtime error and surprise surprise it was so that's how I did it and specifically for this problem as you can see I'm taking an integer n as input this is my input uh, still here uh, never mind this this never happens then from here to here is the function f my solu my actual solution then this eval function I took from someone is the checker and I'm checking is this not equals to n that is my solution is wrong then okay uh, this is a bad one here as you can see yeah this was the first time i tried and here i checked is it greater than 1e5 okay this is also wrong i should have done 5e5 yeah my first one was a little stupid let me go to my submissions again where's my first one time yeah second run time error so i get the input then I run my submission my solution to get fn then if the checker doesn't give n that means answer was wrong I check greater than why is it 1e5 again I mean you get uh, no 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 I want to show the better one hmm. yeah let's just binary search here as well okay this is the one so yeah here as you can see I check for 5e5 if it is greater than 5e5 then I will throw a runtime error otherwise wa and I got a runtime error so what I did I raised the lower bound the lower bound became 5e5 upper bound 1e6 so when we divide them we get 7.5e5 and as you can see the next time I'm checking for this value and I got runtime error again so I did this value 87500 and I kept uh, calculating the mid value locally using this so what I would do is if I get a runtime error I would move this value to the high place if I get WA I would move this value to the low place get the mid again and replace it there I kept doing it like an idiot for so long and finally I figured out the wrong test case so yeah that was it that is how you can also do this absurd thing for no reason whatsoever